I wanted something that that wasn't an encyclopedia, wasn't a dictionary, that was just a space. That's why it was important to have a name that wasn't the electronic dictionary, the electronic encyclopedia. It was wiki. I wrote the first wiki uh, right here in Portland, and that was in uh, 1995, uh, near the beginning of the internet. And it was programmed uh, almost overnight, uh, a couple of days, maybe it was a week. And uh, that, that surprised me how well it came together and how much fun it was to work. So I'm four years into my next wiki. And uh, we have a community. We meet on uh, once a week and talk about how it's going. And a lot of that is to encourage ourselves to keep going, to enjoy going, even if we don't know how long it'll take. One of the things that helped me envision the wiki before the even name existed, uh, before I really understood what an internet was for that matter, is, is that uh, I had experimented with my colleagues, all engineers, uh, and asked them well, to try this new thing called HyperCard. I said, HyperCard is some sort of database, but it isn't rows and columns, so what kind of data is it? And I said, well, that's probably what drives those engineers. So, so I asked them. I asked people, they'd come to see a demo of HyperCard, and I had it at my desk, and I'd say, uh, I'd show them the graphics demos, and they'd say, that's cool, but what good is it? What is it for? And I said, well, let me show you this little thing I'm doing. And I had a little stack, is what you called it, and you could put a person's name or a project's name or an idea. So I had people, projects, and ideas. And I linked them all together. And I made it so that you could name an idea and you wouldn't have to make the page. But if somebody clicked on it, it'd say, don't have that page yet. But if you said, well, I know that idea, you could click on it and hold the button down in it, it would make the page. It was, it was hypertext that would grow as it needed to grow. It wasn't the way HyperCard was designed, but I made it work. And people would sit at my desk and they wouldn't leave. It was fun to work. It had that energy, because everybody had some sort of gossip to tell. In fact, I remember reading the stuff about why decisions had been made at my own company, and I said, really? That's why? You know, some sort of executive battle or something. But uh, uh, the, the, the thing is, people knew what to write, and they knew what they knew, and they enjoyed reading what other people had read, and so there was a cycle there. I think of it as kind of, uh, uh, you write something and you publish it and then it's reviewed. It's not write, review, publish, it's write, publish and review. And it was happening right there at my desk. The trouble is it wasn't on a network. It wasn't shared. So they tied up this computer that was sitting on my desk and I had to wait for him to leave. So uh, when, when the internet came along, I said, well, I want to duplicate that experience. That's what I'm after. And I'll know it when I see it. I couldn't quite say what it was, but it turned out this idea that you could link to something that didn't exist. You know, I learned a lot, you know, just being on Wiki. You know, I, I had a small consulting business and I showed up every day saying, I've got to stop playing with Wiki. You know, here another two hours are wasted, you know, just watching it work. But, you know, there were people behaving on there. And one thing that, uh, that surprised me is that I was talking to a community instead of talking to an individual. And, and I, one thing I observed is if, if you want to ask a question, it didn't make sense to ask a question because there's nobody synchronously there, nobody waiting to answer it. But if you wrote about what you know, if you said, well, here's, here's something that's true about programming in our case, and somebody else would read it and they would say, well, that's not the whole story. And they'd write the rest of the story. You know, they'd fill in the gaps. So you didn't say, I don't know how this story ends. You just write the part of the story you know, and then somebody finishes it. And, and that has become Cunningham's Law.
So another thing that happened in all this is that I just happened to have a server. And, and part of that is, you know, when I uh, left the research labs and was working for myself, I needed to get good email and so forth, and I started talking to friends, and they said, well, we can set you up with a server. And it was configured, it was a little PC, uh, but it was configured like it was a university data center. And I had all those email services and that, but I also had the web. That's how I learned about the web. And I discovered that managing that server, keeping it running 24-7, you know, the power that gave me to project out into the internet was awesome. You know, I just happened to fall into computers when there was a lot of need for people who could program computers. And I, I kept myself current. You know, people ask me, how do, I, how do I stay current, you know, with a gray beard, you know, because it's supposed to be a young person's uh, game. And, and part of it is you just have to be willing to learn whatever's new this month. You know, I love it when people say, Ward, whatever made you think of that? You know, and then I think, well, what did make me think of that? And that, that, that confidence in yourself and knowing that even if you're not getting paid for it, that someday it'll be appreciated. And it's easy to get 10 years ahead. It's easy to get 20 years ahead of the community. But go out there and find out what it's like because 10 years from now you'll be, you know, a guru on that. And, uh, and, and not only that, you'll, uh, you'll have been comfortable the whole time getting there. It's possible. <laughs>